This man right here is the king. Specifically, the punk king of the bass melody. Now he might not pull the headlines like Axl Rose or have quite a coolest collection of hats as Slash, but Duff McKagan of Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver and a bunch of other bands is one of the unsung heroes of bass and criminally underrated. And I want to show you why Duff is the punk king of the bass melody and I want to show you how he injects melody and his own punk rock personality into his playing and how you might be able to do the same exact thing. Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it is all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, becoming the best bassist you can be. And today we're looking at who I think is possibly one of the most melodic rock bassists around, the punk king of the bass melody, Duff McKagan. Obviously, there's two parts to this. Duff's punk rockiness and Duff's melodicism. We're going to be going through heaps of examples uh, in all this, so if you do want the free tabs and notation for all the Duff McKagan bass lines and melodies, you can download them from becomeabassist.com. I'll put a link in the description where you can get them all, but let's get started. At his core, Duff is a punk rocker, right? However you define the Guns N' Roses music, whether you call it hard rock or hair metal or whatever, Duff at heart is very much a punk. In the early days, and still to this day actually, he rocks the CBGB merch, and you can't get much more old school punk than that. And also, 90% of the time, he's going to be doing very foundational bass player stuff. Things like playing riffs in unison with the guitars, which he does in songs like Mr. Brownstone, which sounds like this. Also got songs like My Michelle. <laughs> or songs like Don't Damn Me. In fact, in that one, pretty much everyone's playing the exact same thing, including uh, the vocals, which is a little bit interesting, right? The other classic punk rock kind of bass playing thing he does is just pumping out eighth note bass lines on the roots of the chords in songs like Get In The Ring. Songs like uh, Back Off Batch, let's say. Uh, or songs like New Rose. Duff is actually singing the lead on, uh, by the way, but still just doing exactly what the music calls for, right? Super aggressive. Eighth notes, sounds really good. This is very meat and potatoes kind of playing, and it's what Duff does the vast majority of the time, and does it super well. The overwhelming majority of the time, he's not playing super intricate counter melodic bass lines like you might hear from a bassist like James Jameson, right? Actually, can you imagine if a song like Welcome to the Jungle had a super thumpy, ultra intricate, rhythmically syncopated Jameson style line? Well, let's try that out. Here's the actual bass line to Welcome to the Jungle. But let's imagine we're doing like a, a Jameson kind of style line. So I'm going to change my sound up. I'm going to get rid of this pickup. I'm going to take out all my high end. It's just going to be a nice round sound. Let's do like a, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best, but it's probably going to be a mostly pretty bad <laughs> James Jameson impression. <laughs> That more kind of round sound and all the kind of intricacies like 
all that kind of sound. It might sound really cool by itself, but if you take away that kind of lower octave from the guitar part, it makes the guitar feel a little bit weak. Uh, and you know, with all the extra rhythms, it's almost like the guitar and bass end up fighting each other, and not in a good way. Now, as a punk rocker, Duff knows exactly when it's time to kind of get underneath uh, some riff or something and throw his whole force behind it to support it by doing that thing that punk bassists have been doing for literally decades, just pumping out eighth note uh, bass lines or playing lockstep in unison with their guitarist brethren. That is until he doesn't do any of that. At just about every point, Duff McKagan has this uncanny ability to kind of surprise you with a little melodic flourish. And sometimes, it's almost like a little secret. He'll put this ultra-melodic something-something into a song or a bass line that's just perfectly placed and just beautiful. And if you're not paying attention to it, like if you were distracted by Axl Rose wailing or a guitar riff or something, these things might just kind of wash over you. But actually looking at them and listening, they're just great. Now, of course, the most obvious kind of melodic thing that Duff is really well known for is that bass solo melody at the start of Sweet Child of Mine. You know, it's probably one of the most famous bass melodies of all time. And what a melody it is as well, right? If you look closely at it, there's a couple of phrases that really mirror the actual melody of the song, like, you know, what the singer's singing. There's this kind of thing. And that's actually repeated up there. And if you listen to the actual melody of what Axl Rose is singing, this is in there. So it's a little bit different, but it's that same similar idea. Now, I'm not sure at what point this vocal melody uh, was created or the bass melody was created, but in any case, Duff can take the credit for either creating that melody on his bass and then Axel borrowed it for his melody, or possibly Duff thoughtfully borrowed from the vocal melody and played it on his bass and tied the whole song together. Either way, it shows a really, you know, developed melodic sensitivity that you maybe wouldn't necessarily expect from, you know, a hard rock or a hair metal band in 1987, right? There's also his lesser known, but super melodic line from his Velvet Revolver days, Fall to Pieces. You know? Beautiful and melodic, uh, and we'll talk a bit more about this one in a second, but I want to show you three hallmarks of the Duff McKagan melodicism that you can very easily add into your own playing. The first one is way more common over kind of more slower chill songs, which makes total sense, but he loves highlighting color tones. Now these are notes that aren't necessarily in the chords, but they still work and, you know, provide a different color. And specifically, he loves playing the ninths of chords, also known as the seconds. In fact, if you look at that fall to pieces bass line we just played, this happens twice. The very first thing he plays is this. It's an E over that D chord. And then he kind of falls down to the D. Yeah? So we're getting 9, 1, 9, 1. And then over the C chord, we're getting getting the root, C there, major 7, another colour tone there, and then over the G chord, we're getting that 9 before we get to that, uh, that G again. So we're getting 9 there, down there. So we're getting 9, 9, and then root, major 7 colour tone, 9, uh, pardon me, just like that. There's so many colour tones in here, it's like a rainbow or a painting or something. Funnily enough, there is very little of this use of ninths in Guns N' Roses' first album, Appetite for Destruction, but it starts popping up a fair bit around the User Illusion albums in songs like Civil War. So that one over the E minor chords, both times we get that kind of idea. So from the root up to the 9, back down to the root right there. A similar thing happens in November Rain. So 
again, on that G chord, we're getting the root, root, up to the 2 or the 9, back down to the root. And a similar thing happens on so fine as well. Yeah? Again, on that G chord. Super, super common thing and it's super cool right uh, it's almost like you can see him developing those ideas over his career and this is a great little device you can use on major chords or minor chords and it's simple as just playing the root going up two frets and going back down or even just going straight from the nine down to the root and falling back into it that way super super cool device number two that Duff uses a lot is a specific lick he uses all the time to give his bass lines some movement and some interest and it goes like this just like that. So it's like a minor pentatonic kind of box. So in this case we're in the key of G, we're using the root, then the minor seventh, the fifth, and the fourth. It's usually a descending thing and it's just that super convenient little box right there. He uses this idea in songs like uh, Paradise City. Hold on, where's my recording gone? Just at the end there. Just like that. It also happens towards the end of uh, November Rain. Yeah? So anytime you're on a minor chord, you can use this little flourish yourself. It's almost like Duff in a Box. Device number three that Duff uses is something I'm gonna call the open string bounce. Now this isn't strictly a melodic thing, but it propels Duff's bass lines forward in a super, super cool way. And I think the easiest way for me to, you know, show you is just to actually show you. Here's the very first bass line to Sweet Child of Mine. Uh, the same kind of similar thing happens in Don't Cry. Yeah. And finally, it also happens in November Rain again. Can you see what's happening here? The important notes he's playing, the roots of the chords, they're on the, you know, the strong beats, but he's using the open strings, and kind of bouncing off them. These open strings, they're kind of like ghost notes, but you know, in the case that they're not the star of the show, but having these open strings right before, you know, nailing the roots on beat one or beat three, it really gives these bass lines a bit of a kick. It's the difference between like this, and this. It's not super, um, uh, you know, crazy or anything, but it just propels things forward in a really satisfying way. Now you do have to be just a little bit careful with this one. At all points when Duff uses this device, he's always playing in a key that works with those open strings. Now Guns N' Roses tune their guitars down a half step to E flat, and Duff does the same. And it's not just to get that low E flat there, it's also to make sure that the open strings that he bounces off are in the right key. Now, I've actually taken all the examples in this video up a half step so you can play along with them without having to worry about tuning down your bass. But just imagine for a second that you stayed in standard tuning and tried to do the same thing with those open strings. That'd sound like this. You're getting a lot of this note, right? It just doesn't sound very good, right? That's why you want to make sure that if you're using the open string bounce, the open strings are at least within the key of the song you're playing. 
Basically, if you're playing in, you know, A, E, G, D, C, all the typical guitar keys, you'll be fine to use this device. So you've got these two things that Duff does incredibly well. He is a punk rocker, but he's also got this super melodic streak, which aren't usually things that you kind of associate with each other, right? But to me, the rug that kind of ties the room of Duff McKagan's playing together, the thing that lets him do both so well is his tone. Now, according to Duff, the very first song that he ever learned to play was Sonic Reducer by Dead Boys. So, you know, first song you ever learned is probably going to have a pretty big influence on you, right? Have a listen to the bass sound on this song. Headphones, definitely recommended for this. I don't need anyone. It's a classic picked bass sound, classic punk rock, with enough high end that you get a nice, clear, crisp attack. Uh, and now have a listen to Duff's isolated bass track from Rocket Queen. It's a very similar kind of sonic core, but even more of that high end attack. It's ultra crispy, it's practically sizzling. And that's important, and we'll get to why really soon. But first, let's talk about how you might get a kind of Duff McKagan sound. As always with tone, there are so many things that go into it, the most obvious being the specific gear that he used. So back in the day, uh, you know, the Guns N' Roses glory days, his main rig was a Fender PJ bass and Galleon Kruger amps. That's kind of the classic Duff combo. Uh, he's also been a big fan of Rotosound Swing 66 strings, and by all accounts, he preferred a thinner, lighter pick, specifically these ones, the yellow Jim Dunlop uh, 0.73 millimeters. Now, this is actually more of a guitar pick uh, than a bass specific pick, and that's interesting as well. Now, do you need to use Duff's specific gear to get a sound similar to his? No, you don't, but certain things are going to help. Probably most importantly is having relatively fresh round wound strings. Now, they don't have to be the specific roto sounds that Duff used, but for that super crisp high end sound, you're gonna want a bright round wound string, and the newer they are, the fresher they are, the better. You know, the newer they are, the more attack, more trebles, you'll be able to kind of squeeze out of them. Uh, and if you've got round wounds on your bass, but they're super old and covered in like three years worth of hand sludge and hand gunk, you know, you're just not gonna get that kind of high end that you need from them. Also, if you do have a passive bass, you'll wanna turn your tone knob all the way up to make sure you get maximum crispiness in your tone. Also, the technique is super important as well, right? Duff uses a fairly aggressive picking technique with his right hand. I mean, when you're playing Guns N' Roses music, you kinda of have to have at least a little bit of aggression, right? It's not... It's this. This is where a lighter pick can actually be kind of helpful because you can really dig in and the pick will just give you a little bit of bend and just be a little bit friendlier than a thicker pick might be. There's one other thing that Duff loved to use and that's a chorus effect. And through his career, he's used a couple of different ones. He's used the MXR bass chorus, the CS9 from Ibanez. Uh, he's got a TC electronic tone print as well, but really just about any chorus pedal can give you a decent Duff tone. Check out a really clear sonic picture of his chorus sound from The Garden. Now, I don't personally use a lot of, uh, you know, chorus effects or anything like that, but to get a Duff-like tone, you'd want to set something like the rate over here at like a, you know, medium to low, medium to low, somewhere around this area. And the depth can be anywhere from, you know, about 12 o'clock to up here. Have a listen to how this sounds without any chorus. That little Sweet Child of Mine thing, and then with it. Yeah, it just puts this beautiful sheen on the lines and even accentuates the high end even a little bit more so it's even easier to hear, especially when he plays those beautiful color tones from before. So why is the tone the key here? Why does it help make Duff the punk king of the bass melody? Well, it means anytime he does want to get a bit more melodic. For example, highlighting some color tones or playing that signature Duff lick, his core punk rock tone makes sure that his sound cuts through and his melodic ideas are heard 
crystal clear. And then that chorus on top of it adds this really vocal-like melodicism to the whole thing too. So even if the bass isn't necessarily meant to be front and center, Duff is adding so much personality to every bass line he plays and the tone is a huge part of it making, a part of making himself heard. It's just beautiful. Now, if you want to start sounding a bit more like Duff, maybe you want to get a bit more of that punk rock flavor into your lines. Maybe you want to steal some of his melodic ideas. The absolute best thing you can do is emulate and imitate. And if that's what you want to do, then I'd highly recommend you grabbing all the tabs and notation for all these Duff bass lines and melodies for free at becomeabassist.com. I've also got the songs put up a half step for you so you can learn them all without having to worry about tuning down your bass to E flat, then retuning it up when you're done. So if you click the link in the description or right here, fill out the form on that page, you can be soaking in all the Duff McKagan magic in less than 60 seconds. So I'll see you in there. <laughs>